everybody so i'm lately working a lot with javascript in max uh, and i think it's really an amazing tool to use and uh, gives us a lot of possibilities that uh, would be difficult uh, or uh, maybe even impossible to achieve with normal max programming but uh, i'm aware that uh, uh, this kind of uh, coding work can be coding world can be a bit uh, scary for uh, for a newcomer and so I thought, okay, uh, let's, let's do some tutorials about JavaScript, starting from scratch, because I already did some tutorials on JavaScript that you can find on my YouTube channel here. But uh, these tutorials were kind of advanced. They, they gave for granted uh, a bit of knowledge that was not explained there. So I would like to explain this kind of knowledge uh, now. And I was working just for fun with JavaScript and uh, somehow I created this kind of uh, 8 editor. Which lets you uh, edit the height of a terrain. In the mouse, for example, this is all achieved with JavaScript. This could also be achieved without JavaScript, but somehow with JavaScript it's kind of more neat and more understandable how this works. And maybe it's even easier to achieve it with JavaScript, I think. So, uh, so let's see how JavaScript in Max works. How JavaScript works in general, and especially how it works in Max. Uh, first of all, we have a couple of objects to use JavaScript in Max. They are a JS object and a JS UI object. But we are going just to see the we are going to see just the JS object for now. So let's create a JS object and then we have to give it a name like first JS dot uh, JS because we want to create a JS file and of course this file doesn't exist so we have to crew click double double click into it and an editor appears and then we just write into it auto watch equal one now um, why do we write auto watch equal one uh, first of all you see three things going on here. Well, first, we, we wrote the word auto watch. This is a, it's like an attribute of the JS object. Basically, there is an attribute called auto watch for the JS object that we can set also inside the JavaScript itself. So this is like setting the attribute auto watch equal to one, which is like a flag. So if we say zero, it's not enabled, and if you say one, it's enabled. And this auto watch uh, means that uh, if we open the same file with another editor, for example, I like to use Visual Studio Code, which is a free editor uh, for Windows, but you can use, for example, Sublime or Atom. So if we use, uh, if we uh, if we set auto watch to one, every time we change something in this uh, in this editor, it will change also inside uh, the JS. Uh, object inside max okay and then i put a semicolon now a semicolon it's something that in programming language uh, means that a line is ended but for javascript this is not strictly necessary but it's good practice to put a semicolon at the end of a line so when you made a statement you said okay i want the attribute auto watch is equal to one and I can also just leave it like this, this is not an error, but it's good practice to put a semicolon to make it clearer for both us and the computer that this line is over. Okay, so let's save this file. Once we created it, we can save it, save it in my desktop. It's important that the file and the patch are in the same folder so they can, so the object can find its file, its file when, uh, lo when the patch loads up. Okay. And then once we did that, we can open uh, the file with our editor of choice. For example, you could use Atom or Sublime, which are free editor that you can download from the internet. Uh, for example, I use Visual Studio Code. So what I do is just this. I take this JS file, I put it inside uh, my editor, in this case Visual Studio Code, and then we can edit our JavaScript file directly inside this editor. So why would we uh, want to prefer an editor instead of the standard Max editor? Well, the answer is that a standard Max editor 
has a lot of uh, limitations uh, in respect with uh, uh, an editor that is made uh, positively for programming. So, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code will let you uh, will give you some auto completion. So it will it will suggest you uh, auto complete the word that you are writing according to what you already wrote or what is proper to the language. While the Max editor will not do anything like this. So there are quite some reason to prefer to use the another editor made appositely for programming than the Max editor itself. And this is why there is also an auto watch attribute that allows us to do exactly that. So now programming coding is really is really not difficult. It's really not a hard thing. You don't need to um, to be a genius to understand. This is I think this is clear in 2018. But uh, the thing that could be intimidating is that programming requires a certain uh, precision with syntax. Um, it's like a language, it's like a foreign language that you have to learn in order to speak it. So there is kind of some symbols to learn and you have to use those symbols to program. But this is not complex at all because there is just a limited set of symbols. For example, in Max we have so many different objects that we have kind to know on top of our head. But in JavaScript and in programming languages in general, there is not so many symbols. There is a limited set of keywords that we can use to do uh, whatever we want. So combine the power of JavaScript with Max, I think it's really, it's really uh, cool. So for example, I'm told, uh, for example, there is a keyword in JavaScript that lets us create a variable which is called var. So var, it's not a normal word, it's not a word that I just took uh, from my head. This is a special keyword inside JavaScript, which means I'm declaring uh, a variable. So then I can give a name to this variable, for example, my first variable. So this is a name that I took from, that I choose from uh, the top of my head. My first variable is just a name that I made up, but var, so var is a keyword. Now we write a comment. So this is a comment just like in Max. It means that the compiler, so the computer basically, will not evaluate this as a line of code. This will just be for, our, for us human readers. So uh, I will write var is a keyword inside JavaScript. Which means that uh, um, it's a special word that you cannot use for anything else than to declare a variable. And after the var keyword, you have to put the name of your variable. Now, what is a variable? Uh, in programming languages, it's often said that a variable is like uh, a closet. So you can uh, put stuff on it and then you can open this closet again and get the stuff out. You can put one item inside this variable and then retrieve this item later using uh, accessing the same variable. So, for example, if I write my first variable equal to 10 and then I put a semicolon because the line is over, uh, this means that now the, the variable, my first variable, is uh, contains the number 10. So, for example, if I do something like this, if I say post, then open parentheses and I say my first variable, you see that um, Visual Studio Code will uh, suggest me the name of the variable I created before, which is a uh, kind of a great advantage. Then whenever I save this JS file, it will post the number 10 on the max console. So uh, we can see that the variable, my first variable, contains the number 10. So I just need to access the name of the variable to access the value that is inside it. Now the post function, as you already understood, uh, this is a function. And a function is something that gives us a certain functionality inside programming. Uh, so a uh, this post function, for example, uh, gives us the functionality of printing whatever we put inside the parentheses here in the console of Max. So basically, 
This code will be executed every time I save this JS file. So every time I save this file, it will evaluate the auto watch attribute 1. It will set the auto watch attribute 1. It will create a new variable called my first variable and assign the number 10 to it. So this equal uh, this equal uh, sign here, it doesn't mean that my first variable is equal actually to 10, but this is an assign operator. It means that we are assigning the number 10 to the uh, to the name to the variable my first variable. And then I use a function and this function is already built inside JavaScript inside Max. So this is not a standard JavaScript function. This comes from uh, from Max. So we have this function only when using JavaScript inside Max. And this function post uh, the content or what I put inside those parentheses in the Max console. And then I put a semicolon to say that the line is over. Now, if I want to create a function of myself, so if I want to add the functionalities to this JavaScript file, I can create a function of myself. Creating a function in JavaScript is extremely simple. So I can just write the name function, and this is another keyword. It means that uh, we are going to declare a function. So declare a function means that we are going to write it to uh, set its functionalities. So, uh, for example, let's call this function test function. And then we put two around parentheses after the name of our function. So function is a keyword, it must be uh, written like this, but test function, I just, I just invented this name. And these two parentheses are also standard uh, syntax. Those parentheses are always going to be added after the name of the function. And then we have to create another parentheses called a graph parentheses. And then inside this graph parentheses, we can write uh, the functionality of our function. So, for example, let's write in this function post. So we can also call functions inside another function. And then let's write post uh, 10 plus 3. And then I put a semicolon. Then when I save, it just posted this 10, but this function doesn't get executed because this is only the declaration of the function. But this function has never been executed. If I want to execute this function, I had to write just the name of the function here with parentheses inside uh, the JavaScript file. And now when I save, it will print uh, first 10, which is this uh, variable here, and then it will execute the function and so print 13. So the execution of the file will go from top to bottom and will execute everything that is written inside the file. Uh, but ex for example, a function we have to call. So this is like if when we were calling the post function here, the post function was executed uh, directly when we saved the file. And so we do the same here with the test function. We call the function every time we save the file. But it's really what is interesting about that is that inside Max, we can also call this function, for example, by creating a message, writing the name of the function in the message, and then calling this function using this message. So as you can see, every time I, I click on the test function message, it will call the test function function. As you can see, the JavaScript file inside Max looks exactly like the JavaScript file in my other editor. It's because of the auto watch function. But that's not all of it, because functions can also have arguments. An argument of a function, it's like a value that we give to that function to operate with it or on it. For example, if we write here b, or let's write just value, then I can do something like this. I can say value plus 3. So this means that whatever number I input inside, uh, inside the function, it will be summed to 3. For example, I can write here 10 and then it will write, uh, oh, let's actually comment out this function so we'll not get confused. 
So it writes down uh, the number 13, which is the 10 plus 3. If I write 7, it will write 10, and so on. <coughs> But for example, you saw that I just commented this function here to not get confused uh, with, the, um, with the numbers appearing on the same line. But actually, we can put the numbers on different line by putting an empty post function after that. So for example, if I now go to call the test function, oh, you can see that it gives me uh, a wrong result because I didn't put any number here inside the test function. If I put a number here, you will see that uh, these numbers get summed to 3 because we are calling the test function with that certain value. Okay, so um, arguments that go after the, the function name on a message, this will be the values for our function inside the JavaScript. I can also make it dynamical using a, a number box and the dollar uh, syntax so I can write, uh, I can execute the function by simply inputting a number inside here. Now, uh, if we want to have more uh, control on what we are printing, if we want to have a better understanding of what we are printing, we can write, for example, a prefix to our result of the function. For example, I can write this, I can open this quote and write this, this, the result of the test function. Then I put a colon, oh no, sorry, a double double point, and then I leave a space, and then I put a plus, which means that whatever I input here, it's going to be added at the end of this line. So whenever I execute this function now, it will sum, it will write, uh, this is the result of test function and then it will write uh, oh but you see what's happening if i just save it will write this is the result of test function 73 because now it's just putting the number seven and the number three one after the other because it's considering seven as a, a string uh, we didn't talk about strings but uh, uh, let's not talk about it now but for just just Note that we have to write these two guys inside a parenthesis. So first, these numbers gets evaluated. This uh, this, addi this sum gets evaluated, and then the sum gets added to the end of the string. Which is this uh, string is basically just uh, a sequence of letters that we write inside those quotes. Okay, so every time I call this function, I can see that. Uh, I get print. This is the result of test function plus the result. So uh, now I think I will stop here because it's already kind of um, a lot of input, but uh, I think uh, this is can be already a good starting point. So you can already experiment with it. And uh, in the next tutorial, we'll see uh, some more interesting, some more interesting things. Okay, thank you for following and see you on the next video. Ciao, ciao.